a dual action tailgate, and an industry first lockable in bed trunk. The Ridgeline from Honda. Hey, that, that looked like my fish. Yes, this is a truck that needs no introduction. The Honda Ridgeline. Yeah, I, I'm thinking the same thing too. In all honesty though, is it really worth the hate everyone gives it? I find it funny how Ford and GM owners constantly shit at each other for each other's trucks, yet the one thing that every single truck fan agrees on is how much they hate the Ridgeline. If you ever want to end an argument, all you have to do is just say, Hey, at least neither one of us have a Honda Ridgeline! But why is that? In all honesty. Yes, I know I'm a sports channel, but... Uh, I mean, there is a car in the name of my user, so I mean, I might as well dig into cars and ask a question that no one's been able to answer. But I'm just gonna ignore the typical norm of my channel and pretty much just decide to answer a question I've always wondered. So why people hate the Honda Ridgeline so much? Now, like that time span after the September 11th attacks and right before the economic recession, America goes in a rather weird technological boom. One such idea was that trucks would follow the way of cars and go down the description of being unibody. Now, for most of you normal non-car viewers, I will say unibody is pretty much just how your typical car is made nowadays. Back then though, you used to have a bodywork put on top of a frame and it was pretty simply made. Except, in terms of suspension and installing other components, it was much more complex than that, but at the same time it was very easy to make repairs and for mechanics install new engines, transmissions, powertrain, and so forth. Eventually, more and more car companies started adopting the idea that they could just integrate the frame into the body for much cheaper results and just for rigidity, thus became known as unibody. However, trucks are a completely different topic. You would have to reinforce the hell out of that frame to make sure that it can deal with the payload, deal with towing, and also manage safety standards, and among other things, power. Now, car companies were throwing out tons of unibody truck ideas, from General Motors to Ford, notably Honda, we'll get to that in a minute, Toyota, and so on. The idea being that all these trucks had much more futuristic styling, they'd be more integrated and much easier to build, but at the same time with this cool, sleek looking body, and not a whole lot of people liked it. In fact, very few people liked it. And I mean, I understand it. New technological changes typically take a while for people to really accept them, and more people are usually set in their ways. Problem was, quite possibly the worst candidate to actually execute such a change decided to jump into the ring. Being Honda. Now, in the auto industry, Honda is kind of like the overprotective parent, who makes their kid wear a bike helmet, knee pads, styrofoam, and a safety jacket just to go play baseball outside. For instance, instead of expanding their horizons at vast expense to install an F1-inspired V12 in the NSX in 1984, they decided five years down the line when the car was going into production just to cut the engine in half and just drop in the 3-liter V6. Not bad, but... Uh, and things get worse. The Acura RL. In fact, as soon as it hit the North American market, there was speculation that it would be Honda's first production V8 in a passenger vehicle. No. The, the highest you could get was another stupid V6. Most industry experts say that Honda was just playing it safe in a world where gas prices would spiral out of control by the turn of the millennium, and I mean they're not wrong. The problem is Honda did this way too early and did this completely at the wrong time. And for the record, I'm not saying Honda never made any great cars, because they really have. I'm just saying in terms of vast development, in terms of other areas that aren't typical passenger compacts, sedans, and hatchbacks, typically they were very uninventive, I hate to say. And this is someone who drives a Honda. Surprisingly though, the first brand to actually jump into this ring of unibody truck design wasn't actually Honda. In fact, it was Chevrolet who debuted the Avalanche in 2001. And it was met with mixed response, but overall it received general praise for its rugged abilities, its torque rating for a gasoline powered truck, and just its versatility to live with and its capacity for space. Once GM had tested the waters, Honda decided they were ready to jump into the pool and debuted the Ridgeline in 2005 to even more mixed criticism. Now I will say, Motor Trend actually praised it and named it the Truck of the Year in 2005. The problem was, its beauty was pretty skin deep, as it had multiple problems. I understand for any ambition to be technologically advanced, but the Ridgeline did everything the wrong way. It had the engine and drivetrain out of the Honda Pilot. It had the platform from a Honda Pilot. It had a transmission from an Accord. It had part of roof assembly and suspension from the CRV. And I should note, 
Going back to what I said about Honda refusing to put a V8 in a passenger car, this was the wrong time to do it. I understand the recession was only three years away, but seriously, putting a V6 in a pickup truck as the base engine was an absolute sin in the automotive world at the time, and it continued to be so. They put a wimpy 3.5 liter V6 as the only engine option, and critics just tore it apart for its bad towing rating, for its lack of torque, and for its overall gutless drive. The other issue it seemed it had was marketing. Looking at the measurements of it, Honda thought, hey, it's not as big as Silverado. There it is. It's a mid-sized truck. It wasn't that simple. The problem was, the problem was that it would then have to square up against Toyota's sales juggernaut in the Tacoma. And the problem was, the ridge line was almost a foot and a half longer. Made worse by the fact is that it had little horse syndrome, in the sense that its tiny engine really was kicking itself in the ass to really move that kind of a truck around. Meaning that its gas mileage, well, it sucked. It was 16 mpg. For comparison, a Chevy Tahoe got 21. I'll give credit where it's due. It actually had a good number of electronics built to cope with an off-road setting, and it was actually very cleverly set up. In fact, it had more technology available in form of climbing control and in terms of terrain control than the Tacoma did at the time. The problem was this really wasn't enough to boost sales, and it was pretty moderate to just below average in terms of sales through the majority of its first generation. And Honda was beginning to notice a marketing trend, that less than 3% of anyone who bought a Ridgeline would actually use it to the same capabilities as say a comparable F-150 or Chevy Silverado. The problem was, as it aged all the way to the 2014 model year, multiple critics weren't impressed with the fact of how cheaply made it was. Consumer Reports even noted that the current development of the Ridgeline actually took a quarter of the cost that GM used for the current Chevy Colorado in 2014. None of this stopped Honda from trying. And three years later, debuting during the Super Bowl, it was back. Yeah, this one was met with even more criticism for its styling, and the fact that people just hated it for how it practically was just a chopped up Honda Pilot. WORTH AN ADDED TRUCK BED. So now you're probably thinking, aha, the rising gas prices really would have fallen in favor of the Ridgeline. The answer was, in theory yes, in execution no. This time the current truck was actually two feet longer than the equivalent Tacoma, so it was pretty much just out of range of competing with mid-sized trucks, and it was only able to face the F-150 Silverado and the Ram 1500. Mostly to note, the full-size truck market typically looks down on underpowered engines. In the case of Ford, they have taken possibly the most criticism for their poorly set up EcoBoost lineup of engines. And if it wouldn't work for Ford, it definitely wouldn't work for Honda. The other issue was, while well, yes, the other three big American companies offered V6 options, even Toyota offered one for the Tundra, V6 engines typically weren't a volume seller for full-size pickup trucks. The most notable shred of difference though that it had from its predecessor was the fact that it actually dropped a unibody design in favor of a typical body-on-frame truck design. Sales figures really haven't shown it much love, and it averages about 25,000 trucks sold per year, which isn't great, especially when you look at the competition. Chevy Colorado outsells at 5 to 1, and the Tacoma outsells at 7 to 1. I'm sad to say, this isn't the end of its problems. It has another issue, in pricing. The problem was, 3 out of 5 people who bought a Ridgeline typically got one on a lease. And the other problem is, it was so priced ahead of its mid-size competition, and it really wasn't equipped to take on the full-size competition, that it was usually too pricey for typical buyers to actually venture out to a new brand in terms of pickup truck. Unless you pay the whopping $45,000 sticker price, it's gonna be kinda tough with those interest rates to finance one through Honda. And by the time it's all paid off, you'll have likely paid anywhere between $5,000 to $8,000 more over the MSRP. Problem is, is there really a niche for it? I mean, if you want a mid-sized pickup truck, what's wrong with a Colorado or a Tacoma? If you want a full-size truck, I don't see what's wrong with an F-150. The issue isn't just why isn't the Ridgeline selling, is the question is who is buying the Ridgeline, and who should we sell the Ridgeline to? That's just been the biggest concern of its life and why it's never been able to compete with any true contenders in the truck market. And unless Honda begins to figure that out, I don't think it'll really be a sales whopper anytime soon. Well. Those are my thoughts on it. If you have a differing opinion, feel free to let me know. Thank you.